Hey there guys, I'm Sonic Ghost, and welcome back to some more Let's Play Banjo-Tooie. Last time, we finished up everything we can do in Hailfire Peaks, and this episode, we're once again back here in Spiral Mountain. As per usual, we have more than enough pages to go ahead and turn in the Cheeto for a new cheat. So let's go ahead and pay our friend another visit, and see what new cheat he has for us to go ahead and learn. Great! You got enough pages. For me to tell you a new secret sheet. About time. Spill the beans. Hand over my precious pages first. Much obliged. My fourth sheet is Honeyback. Got it? Well, that's all the cheats I can give you for now. If you find any more pages, you know where to find me. So, Honeyback is very similar to the Fallproof cheat we learned last time, as basically it's another cheat code that makes sure that you can never die in this game. Honeyback, as the name implies, allows you to get your honey back after a while, so now whenever we take damage from enemies, we can recover our health very fast. So, just like Fallproof, this is a very broken cheat code that you can just get by playing the game natively. By the time you do get it, as you can see here, you're near the end of your adventure, but this still breaks the very end of the game. So we'll be showing that off here in just a moment. But for now, we're making our way over the Pine Grove, as I want to go ahead and transform Kazooie back into her normal bird self compared to being a dragon. I want to go ahead and show off this transformation for one world, and then go right back to using standard Kazooie. As if you're playing along at home, and you don't have access to the stop and swap files on the Xbox 360 version of this game, then you may not be able to actually play as Dragon Kazooie, so I wanted to just show that off for one world, and Hailfire Peaks just made the most sense since we use a lot of fire eggs there. So, getting infinite fire eggs for a world where we're using them all the time just made the most sense. But now let's go ahead and make our way over to the code chamber to enter in our new Chico we just learned from Cheeto. So, here we are in the code chamber. Let's go ahead and enter our new cheat code here, Honey Back. I gotta be very careful when I'm entering this cheat because this dang controller is so sensitive on the 360 version. It just snaps all over the place, so I gotta be very slow entering this cheat as it's very spread across this board. But well, there you go, that's Honeyback entered in. So now this cheat code will automatically replenish your energy over time. This is an insane cheat, so if I go over here to the cheat board, and I go ahead and activate the energy regain sheet. Now we have ourselves automatically replenishing energy. So if I get myself some damage here, as you can see, about a second after we took the hit, I got my energy right back. So now we never have to worry about dying from enemies ever again. This cheat code really makes sure that you can't die. So this is just like the fallproof cheat, a cheat code I'm not gonna be using in this playthrough because I find this cheat code to be very broken. So, I'm not going to be using it for the Let's Play sake, so we have some challenge. And sometimes I may want to actually be able to take some damage, so... Definitely want to have that off if you want to go ahead and use Death Warping in this game, just to get back to like the beginning of the world a lot faster. But now with that cheat code unlocked, let's go ahead and get out of here. So now we're back out here in the Wooded Hollow, let's go ahead and make our way over the Jiggy Wiggy's Temple as we have more than enough Jiggies to go ahead and solve yet another one of his puzzles, so let's go ahead and take on Jiggy Wiggy's challenge number eight. So this puzzle here is very interesting when it comes to what we're seeing because this one has a warp pad just right in the center of the room. So right away, we can already kind of see like a pretty important area here in world eight. Although it's very interesting to note that there's notes here in this puzzle. This would be concerning if you played Banjo-Kazooie on the Xbox 360, as there was a glitch in that version where you did one of these puzzles and there was notes in the puzzle. Whenever you solved it, the notes would stay collected in the world, but they wouldn't count towards your total. Luckily, that glitch does not exist in this version of Banjo-Tooie. They knew about the glitch at this point, so it's been patched out of this re-release, which is fantastic to hear, because that was a big concern with the Xbox 360 version of Banjo-Kazooie. But there you go. Now that we've solved ourselves another puzzle, it's time for Jiggy Wiggy to open the way to World 8. Not sure why after you solve the puzzle, 
for challenge number eight in particular, but for some reason the music just decides to speed up, which is a little weird, but I guess we get a remix of Jiggy Wiggy's Temple theme. So World 8 here is located in the Wastelands, and it's actually in a section of this world that you may not even have seen. So there's a little crack in the wall, and inside this crack is our way over to World 8. Jiggy Wiggy just kind of shoots at nothing, which is a little weird, but once he shoots this little area, then a bubble appears where he shot it. So that's our way to get into World 8. Yes, we know at this point, Jiggy Wiggy, we're the chosen one. We have more than enough Jiggies for another challenge, but I'm going to be saving those Jiggies for now. Thank you very much. Let's go ahead and make our way into the silo and warp ourselves over to the wasteland so we can go ahead and enter World 8. So in order to get over to the World 8 entrance here, we want to make our way over to this little crack in the wall that's kind of near the entrance to World 5. And you can kind of see this a little bit better once you get close up because of the blue tinting it makes it kind of hard to see, but there's the bubble to World 8. Before you get in that bubble though, turn your camera around. Because as you can see here, they hide two batches of notes right next to that crack in the wall. I swear, these are probably the hardest notes in the whole game to find because they're very well hidden. You hear the ride in the great bubble elevator up to the clouds. Well, it's not much of a line, so I guess I can just go ahead and jump in the bubble. So let's go ahead and do so. Let's ride away up to the clouds. So welcome to Cloud Cuckoo Land. This world's very interesting, as it's the only world in the whole game we explore, besides places like Spiral Mountain, that do not interconnect with the rest of the levels in this game. Cloud Cuckoo Land you just basically explore this area. There's no way to get to other worlds from here, which is very interesting to note. Fancy little physical exercise for a ball? Not really. Yes, you do, Banjo. Right, I'm Mr. Fit, and I'm really fit I am. So fit, in fact, that if you can beat me in three events, I'll give you my fitness gold medal. That's nice. It is, actually. As you can probably see, event number one is the high jump. The bar set at my best height. All you need to do is jump over it to win. Well, that's good to know, but unfortunately right now we can't really jump over your bar as it's a little too far out of reach for us. So maybe if you find some spring shoes, we'll go back to that event and then beat his high score. But here we want to go ahead and use the drill bill to go ahead and destroy the pieces of the floor here. And doing so, we can find things like some health and some other items, but there are actually important collectibles here, like a honeycomb piece. So we wanna go ahead and just destroy all these pieces of the floor. We got ourselves some spring shoes, so that's definitely good to know. Got some feathers here. Let's see what's under this piece of the floor. That's a strange looking seed. I found a strange looking seed. Is it edible? I'm not really sure this is edible, but I'm not sure if I would want to eat it either. So I'm not going to test that theory for you, Kazooie. But what I will do is grab ourselves some spring shoes. Now let's take these spring shoes back to the beginning portion of Cloud Cuckoo Land here. And let's beat this guy's high score. Because with the spring shoes, we can easily vault over this pole. Uh, how did you do that? Never mind. We'll move on to event number two when you find me. So event number two here we actually won't be doing for quite some time as it actually requires the move that we learned here in this world. So we're going to just leave that one go for now. He's going to just be sitting in his sack for quite a while on his own. It gives some time to reflect about that high jump performance. So let's go ahead and enter this little cubby hole here into the world because this is the main section of Cloud Cuckoo Land, the central cavern. And here, you already heard it, there is a Jinjo in here, but we can't reach him at the current moment because he's way up there. We can probably try using one of our clockwork eggs maybe to shoot up there, but 
You're better off just leaving that guy for now. As you see, there's some spring shoes there. And also, there are some split up pads here. So, we'll definitely want to keep that in mind for later. We'll definitely be using Kazooie by herself to get to that. But, I want to mention this. This warp pad here is the only other warp pad in this whole world. So, we can only warp between the world entry and exit and the central cavern. That's it. You can't warp anywhere else, so I find these warps in this world completely useless. You just can't really do too much with that. It's kind of disappointing if you ask me. What's the sign say underwater here? She who mends carts can also fix mice. That's a very weird thing to read, but sure. I know what that means and I'm dreading it. It's an old friend we actually met in World 2. She's returned, and she's returned with a vengeance. So I'm not looking forward to that one. But over here, I want to go ahead and select my clockwork eggs and shoot them through this little crack, because as you can see, there's this switch here. We can only activate this with a clockwork egg, and once we do so, then we just randomly get this number on a safe. So remember what that is for later, as we can't really do too much with that just yet. As you can imagine there, there are four numbers and we just found one of them. So we're going to want to keep that in mind for later, as there's going to be four numbers throughout this world we're going to try to find. Hey young man, I'm George Ice Cube, stuck up here at this perilous altitude. What happened, George? I was out walking on the icy side of Hailfire Peaks with my wife, Mildred, when a huge blizzard came along and blew me away. Why not stay up here? Lovely view. I'm afraid of heights. Now, I reckon I'm above the icy side. So if you can just give me a little push. All right, well, let's go ahead and push him off. Just help a nice ice cube out. Just don't tell him we murder his wife. No! Wrong side! Tell Mildred I love her. Well, that was dark. But at least we got a flight pad. Someone's in the air. Defend your jiggy at all costs. Well, that's a freaky looking eyeball. If you try to actually go into your first person mode right now and shoot this thing down, you won't be able to, so if I can actually turn, as you can see, our eggs just bounce off. It doesn't matter what type of egg you use, all types of eggs don't work against that thing. So don't even try, because you're just going to be wasting your time. We'll have to do something about those eyes later on. But for now, look who it is. It's our old friend, Canary Mary. Hey, Banjo, it's that crazy Canary Woman again. That's me. Now, how about another race? But the handcart's still down in the mine. Don't worry. You can use this clockwork mouse that I found instead. Clockwork mouse? Are you mad? Oh, yes. Go on, jump on board, and press X as fast as you can to power the mouse along. All right, let's get this one out of the way. So... In World 2, we met Canary Mary, and she repaired this minecart for us to go ahead and use. And the minecart was how we were able to race. Minecarts don't exist up in the sky, so instead we have ourselves this mouse, and we need to button mash like crazy. Now the thing is, we already know how this works because of the minecart race back in Glitter Gulch Mine. There are two prizes here. There's a Jiggy, and there's a Cheeto Page. If you don't care about getting all the Cheeto pages, I just recommend doing the first race for your Jiggy, as the second race is notoriously known as one of the hardest things in this game. Possibly the hardest thing for a lot of people. This race coming up is really stupid. But at least we won the first one. And that's just some good practice and a good warm up for race number two. The real challenge is yet to come. You beat me again. Yep. The usual prize will suffice. Don't be greedy, Kazooie. We won all of her possessions in the mine. Oh, no, you didn't. Look what I found up here. I also found another papery thingy. Hop on the mouse. 
if you want to try and win it. All right, let's do it. Round two. This time, let's destroy our hand. Ready, three, two, one, go. So, here's the thing about this race. There's a lot of misconception of how this one works, but the second race here with Canary Mary and Cloud Cuckoo Land, she rubber bands like crazy in this race, so pace yourself here. You can go ahead and start out slow like I'm doing, and then once she speeds ahead of you, you speed up and get in front of her. Once you're in front of her again, you can take your time and pace yourself once again, and just keep on doing this until you win. If you feel like you can't do a solid couple minutes of button mashing, then I recommend pausing the game and just giving yourself a breather, because you're allowed to pause during these sections, so keep that in mind. But, again, if you just pace yourself, and once you get in front of Canary Mary, just take your time a little bit and just button mash like crazy to get in front of her, just keep on doing the cycle, and that's the best way you can defeat Canary Mary. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. I'm going to be very careful here not to overdo it because this race is very easy to destroy your hands in. And this race I find easier in the N64 version, not just because of the bigger buttons, but because the game lags when you're going all throughout Cloud Cuckoo Land like this. So the lag actually makes it easier to compete in this race because it actually accepts more button inputs compared to the 360 version. Uh, just a little bit more to go. And with that, we won the race. Did I lose? Sure did, lady. Now, hand over that papery thing. My last possession. Well, that's it then. I reckon I'll be off for my dinner. What are you having? A nice worm sandwich and a tasty bag of millet. Mmm, sounds good. How about a third race to let us try and win your dinner? Well, no. You probably win, and then I go hungry. See you around, fellow bird and bear buddy. I'm glad that she said no to the third race, because I don't want to do it. My hand already hurts just from that second race. I don't want to do a third. We button mash so hard that we destroy this mouse. It is actually insane to think about. We destroy it by button mashing. That is definitely way to go because my controller probably feels that beat up at this point. There's just so much button mashing we need to do. So yeah, that's the Canary Mary race. One of the hardest things in Banjo-Tooie. Done and over with. So now with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the episode on that note. Next time on Let's Play Banjo-Tooie, we'll go ahead and actually use the transformation here in Cloud Cuckoo Land and explore the world with whatever transformation Hubba has to offer. I'll see you guys next time.